Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay Glees here and today we're going to talk about Paul Phoenix. We're not going to hit on every single thing that the character does, but we're going to give you a basic game plan and some things you can implement right now as a beginner in Tekken to kind of take Paul and hit the ground running as you go online and face off against the world. So Tekken is a game that is super deep. It has so many options for each character. Every character has like 100 plus moves and it can be very overwhelming. So this is gonna be a, a beginner video for Paul Phoenix. We're not gonna get into you know crazy wall bounces. Uh, we're not gonna get into some wild stuff. We're gonna give you some basic combos, some basic strategies in order to utilize the character um, efficiently and effectively um, as a beginner. And when you start to master some of these beginner things, the more advanced things, you know, tend to come over time. Tekken is an overwhelming game. I played Tekken back in, you know, Tekken 2, Tekken 3. I was, you know, pretty good at those games. I didn't play the series for a very long time. And the moves that have been added to the game since that time have obviously, you know, been massive. You know, these characters have went um, under massive changes. It is a legacy game. Uh, but the changes have been massive over that time. And for individuals coming back to Tekken, it's a very daunting task uh, in order to learn these characters and play them, you know, as, you know, an efficient, you know, an efficient and effective way. So we're going to go over just a, a basic game plan here. So Paul in this game, I think, does best as a zoner and a brawler in your face. And what I mean by a zoner is, I think that he's a very good defensive character. So you can bait your opponent into doing shenanigans with your movement, and then punish them with the death fist, or punish them with the down forward one. I think that those moves are really good. Now the death fist is negative on block. There is a lot of pushback on it. Some characters can punish it better than others. You have to know your matchups with that. The death fist is not something that I would just throw out. You can sidestep the Death Fist very easily. The recovery is super long. So notice how long that recovery is. If we change the opponent to stand and guard, notice that there is a little bit of pushback, but it's minus 17. Again, most characters are going to punish you very hard if they block that. Down forward one is a little bit different. So it's minus four. It is a high though. It's not a mid. So they can crouch that. So they can sidestep it and they can crouch it. One of his best moves in the neutral is the sway four and the stand four, both of which are very good. I uh, can, uh, you know, beat out a lot of moves as the stand four is very quick. Uh, this move also is plus on block, so the sway into that. And when I talk about the sway, you notice that his down back, like quarter circle back, he sways and he has a couple options off of that. So he has the stand four off of it, which is plus on block. Again, it is a high, it does track also. Notice it's like a spin kick. So if somebody's trying to sidestep, it's going to whop them out of that. And it does crush in the combo. So if they throw out a button and you beat them with that, boom, crush right in the combo. And we'll get to some basic combos in a little bit. Off of this way, he also has the one. All right, that also launches and crushes. He has the two, which is negative, minus eight. Uh, very good, very quick. Uh, and then he has the low. And off of the low, he has a couple options. So if you notice, even on hit, it's negative. All right, it's negative 10 on hit. Like this move is, is not amazing, but you do have options to follow up with. So you can utilize this right here. Notice the last hit is a high. So if somebody tries to uh, crouch that, they're gonna be successful. They're gonna crouch it and you know they're gonna punish you. It is negative, minus 10. All right, so some characters will be advantageous in that situation and be able to punish you uh, depending on the character. Now, you do have another option. So you have that. And then if you end in three, you get the overhead kick. Minus 13, more negative, uh, but it doesn't have a gap. You can't crouch it, so characters go to crouch. Uh, they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to get hit. If they crouch and hit a button, uh, you're also going to crush them, so it'll launch them, which is really cool. So you have that kind of little mix-up game off of it. Another string that we're going to take a look at is the down forward one. So it's down forward one, one, two. All right, the second hit is a high. So a, an opponent can crouch it and they can punish you. 
Now there are mix-ups off of that because the down forward one goes into the sway. So when you're able to sway, you got all of those other options that you had before off of the sway. A lot of things are predicated off of the sway. Uh, the combos are also predicated off of it because this corkscrews them, which allows you for, uh, which allows you to get extra combo damage. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Now, if this string does happen to hit, you can go right into the death fist. And that's like 72 damage. It's really, really good and really simple. The timing on it is a little bit strict, so you're going to have to practice it. It's not something that you're just going to be able to do immediately. Uh, but it is very good. Another string that you can sway off of is the 3-2. So he's able to just like sway back and you can cancel the sway again into anything, you know, any of those options, any of those buttons that you would like. Now, you may be thinking like, why is this string so important? It launches your opponent. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. In Tekken, there's, there are certain moves that, it'll, it looks like a corkscrew, like corkscrews your opponent. You can see it in the move list. And what this actually does is it kind of like bounces them off the ground and it allows you to extend combos. So let's look at another button here, the down forward two. We're going to look at a combo based off of that. So the down forward two launches, if the opponent gets hit while they're standing, if they're crouching, they just kind of like, they're just negative and it just pops them up from crouching, but they don't leave the ground. This move is safe. All right, it is safe, so it's very good to utilize. So this is what the combo would look like with the sway. So we're going to launch him. Three, two, sway back four. Now notice he like corkscrews in the air and he kind of sits on the ground, right? That's important. Uh, the reason why that's so important is because I can run up and I can continue comboing my opponent at that point. All right, so we're able to get that combo 59 damage. And again, this stand four will corkscrew the opponent and allow them to sit on the ground for you to extend your combo off of any type of launcher. He also has another move that I utilize that does that, which is the back one, two. So if I were to launch back one, two, notice it corkscrews them. So they kind of sit on the ground again. It's important to know that because sometimes like an opponent will come up and they'll do something like this, right? Like they'll, they'll come up and like jump kick or they'll like run run at you and you know do something like this and you catch them with like a stand one right so when you catch them with the stand one sometimes this isn't going to be able to come out so you catch them with the stand one off the juggle you can quickly go into that and extend the combo so back one two will corkscrew them into that i typically use that for conversions that kind of like happen when i'm planning on doing a conversion and i have an actual combo that i'm going to implement uh, this is typically what I'm going to use. It's more damage, but the back one too is also good to utilize. Comes out a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to react mid-game if you notice that your opponent gets launched. So we're going to take a look at a full combo here. And we're going to add the stand four to this combo. All right, and at the end there, what I use is down four, two, both punches. All right, and that's going to add to my combo. It's also a low. It is unsafe, like super unsafe. If, if they go to block that, you're stuck in recovery frames forever. It's like, uh, for those of you that play Mortal Kombat, it's like uh, Raiden's Back 2 in like Mortal Kombat X, where it's like minus like 20 something, 20 plus. Uh, so, for those of you that play that game, you know what I'm talking about. It's super negative. There is risk that is involved in it, but a lot of Paul's moves are mid. So a lot of times the opponent is going to be stand blocking. His most effective attacks are middle attacks. Middle, 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 middle. All right, so middle. All right, so most times your opponent is going to be stand blocking. You can throw this out as a mix, but again, it's super unsafe. So let's look at some crush options here. So we're going to go into this little John right here. And we're going to put the counter hit on, boom, all of them. So notice the difference when I hit them with the stand four when it counters. Boom, counter. It's, it's a counter hit off of a button. So if he throws out a button and my button wins, all right, this is what you get. That's what that looks like. That's what that looks like. You have to be pretty quick at it. You have to be able to quickly notice that you just countered them 
and you have to go into combo. And for Paul, most of his combos are relatively the same. So it would be 3-2, Sway, 4. So it would look like this. 3-2, Sway, 4. Down 4-2, four, 1 plus 2. All right, and you got to just get that timing down. The inputs aren't very strict on it. The thing that is uh, really difficult is visually seeing and reacting to the fact that you just got a crush hit. So you just countered. So just visually seeing that and being able to react to it. That's the most difficult. Once you once you land this part, you know, that, the rest is easy. The rest is very easy. So we're gonna look at the string or the combo off of this. So if I do my sway four, all right, the way that it's gonna work, I'm gonna go into my down forward one. So it would be sway four, down forward one. All right, and now it's gonna launch them. And then the combo is the same. All right, it's just the same thing. Three, two, sway four, run up, down four, two, one plus two. So it'll look like this. All right, so super simple, does crazy damage, 83 damage. And then the um, up back two, which does track quite a bit. All right, that does also launch. His hop kick. So he has this one, or if you like run in, you can do it as well. The hop kick, here's the combo. Looks way different, right? No, it doesn't. It's the same. <laughs> it's, it's the same. It's all the same. Uh, he also has a really good sidestep move that is a high. So we're going to take a look at it right here. It does create a counter hit, and that's the combo off of that. All right, it's just sidestep one. So this works really good for sidestepping. And again, like you see, it does counter hit and allows you to combo. It is crouchable, so somebody can crouch it. Um, if somebody's like a wild man, like they're just throwing out all these crazy buttons, they're just hitting everything. This oftentimes isn't really a great a great tool, <laughs> unless they're throwing out things you can sidestep. Most times, I find that this move works really well against players that are good. Like this works much better setting up against good players than bad players. Bad players are just hitting everything, hitting buttons, doing everything. They're maniacs. Uh, you can't condition them, and that's just something that's going to happen. Uh, while you're playing online. Sometimes it's best to just go in with brute force against those guys and just you know shut them down immediately. This is also plus on block. So if I set the um, opponent to guard, this is uh, plus eight. All right, so it's really plus. So that's another reason why this is really good to use. Forward in both punches is also plus. It's a mid attack, so they can't crouch it, uh, plus three. All right, so there's, that's another good button to use, especially when you're up close. And you can set up mind games off that, get some grabs going, um, you know, get some staggers going off of it. So let's say I'm plus, and I just go in. A lot of, a lot of people, it seems, they don't know this is uh, so plus, it's plus eight. You'll see that they hit buttons a lot. Set them up for things, you know, get, get your groove going. So the last thing we're going to take a look at before we get to the rage art is the down forward three. All right, so notice that does counter. So it will crush him. We're able to get combos off of that. The reason why this is uh, so good is because it creates somewhat of a mind game off of the down forward one. Notice he has that sway forward. So you have the, the mid, which you have to block standing, and then you have the low. So it does create some mind games there, forces your opponent uh, to have to react, and it does combo. All right, very basic. Uh, super simple way to get some extra damage here off of that. So the last thing that we're going to take a look at is the Rage Art for Paul. And Paul has a very interesting uh, Rage Art where he's able to actually cancel it. So he can use it as a launcher and get more damage. So I'll show you what this looks like. And the way that you're able to do that is just by holding back. So if I were to launch my opponent, I just hold back. Then I go down forward one, and guess what? The combo is way different. It's like it's exactly the same. <laughs> so you just go into you know the down forward one, and you just go into you know the normal combo that you would off of that launch, and you're able to get some good damage. And if you notice the difference between the two, uh, we'll take a look at the damage here, just so you can see it. I think it's like 20 more damage, so that's 55, and.
Yeah, so it's almost 20 more damage. So it does definitely benefit you uh, to utilize this. Also, let's say you get a launch. You can run up and, you know, get your Rage Art right here, too. Uh, as they're corkscrewed into the ground, get some good damage there, 68. So you can, you know, add some more damage that way. Now, Paul is, is a great character. He's, he's great for spacing. You know, his moves, they take up a lot of space on the screen uh, for the most part. His hop kick is pretty good as a punisher. Very good character, very strong, great damage. So those are some basics with Paul. Obviously, he has more moves. He has more things that you can implement, more strategies. But I wanted to just get kind of a basic game plan down in order to, you know, have you understand Paul as a character, have a simple game plan, and even maybe understand Tekken as a whole a little bit better. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell so you get updated whenever I post new content. Also, if you have any other tips for Paul, you can leave them down in the comment section. Uh, again, remember this is somewhat of a, a basic rundown and understanding of the character. If this video does well, you guys want to see more, I can break down the character a little bit more in depth and take you know little sections of what he does and put them you know in a video for you to help you understand a little bit better. So as always, I want to thank you guys for checking in. It's Jay Glee signing out and continue to game strong.